Let's go around here. In today's exciting episode, we talk about this Makita drop saw, the 40 volt, and why I use it every single day. I've been using this Makita drop saw for like five months now and originally it was just so I could put it through its paces, try it out, but then I started using it every day because it was my favorite drop saw to use every day. Now, full disclosure, uh, Makita gave me this drop saw. They didn't tell me what to say, they didn't pay me anything, they just gave me the drop saw because of the exposure that it will get on the channel. And according to New Zealand law, I have to put advertisement here, but having said that, I'm going to tell you exactly what I like about it but I'm also going to tell you exactly what I don't like about it. Let's start with a positive. I like to think of myself as a positive person. Depth adjustment. This little lever thing in here, you move in if you just want to do regular cuts, but if you want to do a depth adjustment, you move it out. Then it has this little spring-loaded screw that you can adjust to go up and down and it works really well and because it's spring loaded you can literally watch it go down a couple of mil at a time and if you have a mark on the end of your piece of timber you can get that blade exactly onto that mark and that's for like if you're doing a checkout or something like that where you don't want to cut all the way through your timber and then as soon as you're done with it you just push that lever back in and the blade goes right down that's a good little system. It works well. Uh, my favorite thing at first when I got this saw was how compact and lightweight it is. I always keep a drop saw here in the van behind the driver's seat. At the moment I just keep it on the job but it's usually there. So you have to dip down a little bit and then pull it out. So having one that is a manageable weight is super important to me. And this one is like 20 kilos I'll double check there and I'll put it right there but it's a lot lighter than almost all of my other drop saws because I'm a spoiled youtuber pretty much I have four drop saws to choose from I bought the Festool the Capex I had the DeWalt uh, had that for years maybe over 10 years Makita gave me this one and Milwaukee gave me their drop saw that would probably be the closest comparison to this one the Milwaukee wins in terms of compact and lightweight but it lacks the depth adjustment and the depth of cut that this one has. So I've built this little platform and installed this staircase here to get up to the platform. This is the attic storage. And when I was cutting the plywood up here, I would actually cut little bits of it on the drop saw. And that is because the drop saw has a very deep cut for how small the blade is. At 90 degrees it can go 70 mil by 312 mil. When I'm saying depth, I'm probably saying it wrong, but I mean from the fence to the furthest point toward the handle there. That forward rail design that they've been putting in more and more Makita saws, and it's sort of reminiscent of the Festool saw. It's part of the reason why it can stay so compact and come out so far. That's another thing I like. Now obviously, it's a 40 volt drop saw, it's a cordless drop saw, it takes one 40 volt battery and it has this Bluetooth chip here, so when you get the matching Makita vacuum like this, it also has a Bluetooth chip, then you have a nice Bluetooth pairing system for the dust extraction. Again, I've been using my Festool MIDI vacuum for years, and I really like that vacuum. It's an awesome vacuum, but it's not, it's not a Bluetooth one. They have Bluetooth ones now, and they have a different way of connecting it with their drop saws, but this one here has the chips, and those chips are on the circular saws, they're on the planers, they're on a lot of their other Makita tools. I was a little dubious about the Bluetooth system, you know, like its consistency and working. Once you get it paired, which can take sometimes like 30 seconds, it's, it's good to go. Now number five of the things that I like about the Makita 40 volt miter saw is probably the thing that I expected the least and that is the angle adjustment system. I called it that, I don't know what you would call it, but the ways in which you can change the angles on this miter saw. 
Now it all happens down here at the handle. Once you loosen the front one, that will let you do the base. And the base goes up to 60 degrees both ways. And it also has this indent lever. So once the lever's down, you bypass the indents. And once the lever's up, it locks into your common angles. Now that's pretty standard, right? That's what you'd have on all drop saws. But this one here, the other circle, once you loosen that, that is the thing that tightens and loosens the top of the miter saw. So you don't have to reach around the back, change your angle and then reach around the back and tighten it. You tighten and loosen it all from the front. So you're here, I'm happy with that, tighten. That doesn't move. The only reaching over that you do have to do is this little lever at the front. You just pull that forward and that lets you tilt the blade in the other direction. Very cool angle system. That's awesome. The things that I dislike about this drop saw. There's always something of course, there's always something. Number one, the light has its own button. Why? Why does the light have its own button? The button is up here. So you go to make a cut, you press the button, the light goes on, it casts a shadow that, you know, lets you know where the blade is going to hit when you get to the timber. You make your cut, you go away, you nail some timber together, and then when you come back, more often than not, the light is off again. It's a nuisance. So the Milwaukee, when you pull the trigger on the Milwaukee, the light goes on, and it stays on for a certain period of time, you cut, come back and when you pull the trigger again the light goes on. Obviously this is a very minor thing but just having to go up there and go like that every time is a, a minor nuisance. So I prefer it the other way. Um, another thing that's up here with the light switch is the vacuum switch and you don't press that when you go to make a cut. As long as your Bluetooth is paired when you pull the trigger the vacuum goes on. But if you don't want to pull the trigger to turn the vacuum on you press this and then you press it again and then after a few seconds it turns off and the good thing about that is you can press that button take that out and you can clean the base of your saw without having to have a spinning blade near your hands that's pretty cool i really like that now another dislike or drawback let's say just a thing to consider if you want to buy a drop saw is you're going to miss out on the depth that's a 90 mil piece of wood and you can't cut a 90 mil piece of wood up on edge like that. You could probably cut a 90 mil skirting on edge like that. You've got a bit of space here from the bolt where you'd probably sneak it in behind the bolt. But a 4x2 like this, or a 2x4 if you're American, you can't cut it like that. You have to cut it like this. So that's one thing you'd probably want to consider if you're thinking about this saw. You're missing out on that, that height. Now while we're on the subject of the base, another limitation is the fence. It's not that high. It's about as high as the width of my phone. Whenever I want to do skirting or high quality finishing timber, um, especially on that villa job we did and bungalow job, I'll get the Festool Capex out. It's got a nice high fence and also a higher cut capacity. Um, this is limited in that way. But I'm not doing that every day. So that's why this is the daily saw. Now the fourth drawback is the price. The thing I dislike about this is the price. Obviously it didn't apply to me because I was lucky enough to be given the saw. But if you're considering this, just keep in mind that you can probably get a similar saw, maybe with a few less features, for about $800 versus $1,300. Maybe, maybe you're committed to the 40 volt, or maybe this has certain features that you really like. It's got to tick most of your boxes. Now the last thing, the last drawback, the thing I, I, I do dislike about this saw is at first I thought the dust extraction was great. That was my first impression of it. The fact that it all hooks up via Bluetooth and it seemed to work well but after using it for five months it tends to block up a lot now the issue is down here at the base it has this little port where the dust gets sucked into and then it goes through this small tube around the side that works its way up into this other port now this other port is connected to the blade there's a little wee shroud just behind the blade that takes dust there so it's a good system in theory you've got two points where it's sucking up dust but I find that the tube is too small going around. There's too many tight angles for the sawdust to get jammed up. All my timber gets clogged up at the base here. I basically have to put my pencil in here, pull all the dust out in order for it to work again. It's funny because it's not the kind of thing you notice very often. 
you know, I'll just be cutting away, cutting away, not really thinking about it, thinking about whatever I'm building, and then I'll come back and I'll be like, there's a lot of dust on this thing, what's wrong with it? And then I'll look down and I'll just see that that port down the bottom there is completely clogged up. So, um, that's something to consider if dust extraction is important to you. Now, honorable mentions, I mentioned this in my first impression video, the old pistol grip. It's not like the Festool, you know, directly above the blade, but it's not far off. These handles are very divisive. People don't like them, people love them. I'm on the love them camp. I think it's intuitive. You're holding right where your cut is and you're pushing down on your cut. A lot of drop saws will have the handle out here and then you're kind of working against the blade. Oh, so there you go. That is the Makita 40 volt miter saw. My five month review and why it's my daily saw. I just like the all round sort of functions of it. It does everything I need it to do. It's lightweight, it's cordless, it's a handy little drop saw. Let me know what your favorite drop saw is or what's your best all rounder and why. And um, if you've got any questions about this that maybe I didn't cover in the video, yeah, please ask below and I'll, um, I'll try my best to answer them. Thanks for watching this exciting episode and I'll see you in the next one.